In this video, I'll be taking a height field, converting it to geometry, and extracting the cliff sections. To begin with, I'm going to add a geometry node, and then inside, load a digital asset called PE Load Landscape. In Project Pegasus, our landscape is stored in three separate files. There is the base landscape, that I created during block out. Then there is a layer of procedural detail, followed by a layer of manual edits that were made in Unreal. This digital asset loads in those three separate files and assembles them together. And then I'm going to use this with another digital asset called Height Field ID to Layer. This tool can take ID layers that are stored on the height field and convert them to a mask. For example, if I select the cliff ID layer, then I can see a mask of the cliffs. And these different uh, ID layers are used to drive the material that's in Unreal. So they drive where textures are placed. So for instance, here on the landscape in Unreal will be the where the cliff textures are. So by working this way, using masks generated by ID layers that drive the material placement in Unreal, I can now procedurally generate cliffs that are placed in the same areas as the cliff material on the landscape. If you don't want to use these digital assets, the load landscape and uh, ID to layer, then I'd suggest working with a regular height field and then using a height field mask by feature. And you can mask by slope to mask out the steepest areas on the height field. And then this mask, we can use it to convert these areas to geometry and generate the cliffs from there. So let's just delete those. Now I want to convert this height field to geometry. So add a height field convert. This will then convert our height field to geometry. And if we look at our geometry spreadsheet, you can see that the layers that were on the height field have been transferred to point attributes. And I can visualize that mask. If I come over to visualizers, I can add a color. I want this to be a ramped attribute. And we can choose one of the preset gradients and the attribute we want to visualize is mask. So we hit close and just hit the visualize button to make it visible in the viewport. Well, I don't really like that gradient. Let's change it to white to red. And there we go, that's much more visible. I'm just going to blur it slightly with an attribute blur. The attribute I want to blur is mask and this will just slightly blur our mask so it's not quite so harsh and then we add a blast and then in the group field i'm going to type at mask less than 0.1 and that leaves us with just the cliff sections that have that mask attribute and just in case we have any floating points or any issues with our geometry, I'm just going to add a clean. And this might just clean up any areas we might have with our geometry. And then I'm adding a delete small parts. And this we're just going to use to delete some of these smaller bits of geometry. I'm actually going to increase this threshold to something really high, say 1000. And there we go. Now we've kind of just got the major cliff sections remaining. Now, I'm just going to add attribute delete and delete all of the attributes that are on our geometry. So this just clears up our geometry before we export it as an output. See, one important thing I need to add here at the end is a connectivity. And I want the connectivity type to be primitive. So this will create a unique integer on any primitives that are connected together. Scroll all the way down. There we go, I have 152 cliffs, all as kind of separate unique bits of geometry with an identifying integer. And I can visualize that if I add at the end here an attribute wrangle. I'm going to type in at CD for the color attribute equals rand open brackets, 
This expression creates a random number between 0 and 1 based on a seed value. And the seed value I'm going to be is class, close brackets, add a semicolon, and then just need to change the to run over primitives because that's what our class attribute is stored on. And there you go. Now you can see we have each cliff assigned a random color. And we do have quite a few large cliffs up here on our kind of main mountain over there. But I've also got some very long uh, cliff sections, for instance, here. And these might cause me a bit of um, this might cause me a few issues later on because I'm going to subdivide this geometry um, quite heavily so I can then displace it. And there's a very good chance that I might run out of memory trying to subdivide such a large bit of geometry. So to cut this up into kind of smaller sections, what I'm going to do is generate a flow mask, which will kind of run down these kind of canyon kind of crevice look areas and I can then use that to cut up this geometry into smaller sections. Let's give us a bit more space and then add a height field flow. And here you can see that flow mask and it's quite heavy so I'm going to tone it down a little bit. Change the rain amount to 0 0.1 as well as the density to 0 0.1 as well. And then I'm going to change these spread iterations to 100. That's a bit more subtle. Let's add a high field remap. Actually, before the high field flow, I'm just going to drop down a high field resample. And I'm doing this because this will just slightly soften our landscape and give us just a slightly more kind of softened flow map. Okay, now those flow masks are slightly smoother. And I want to just sharpen them up a little bit, and I can do that using this high field remap. The layer I want to remap is the mask layer. Let's just increase the minimum input a little bit. That put it a bit higher. 0.8 is a good value. It's too high, 0 0.75. What I want, where well, they're just kind of cutting through some of these cliff sections. Let's just bring the input max down to say 0 0.76. Now I'm using this high field copy to move this mask layer to a new layer called flow. And now I want to transfer this back over to our high field. So add a high field layer and then add this high field copy as the second input. And the layer I want to copy is flow. So if we now check our geometry spreadsheet, we now have that flow layer transferred to our high field. And if we convert it to geometry, and add another visualizer for flow. Is a ramped attribute. The attribute is flow. There we go. We now got that flow mask also on our geometry. Let's rename this mask so it's clear what that visualizer is for. Now. After this, delete small parts. I add the blast. Set this to points. And now I want to blast any points that have the flow attribute greater than 0 0.5. And there we go. Now you can see where those flow attributes were blasted these sections. This has now cut up this long piece of kind of cliff section into smaller pieces. If we take a look at our attribute wrangle at the bottom here and, and uh, just disable and re-enable that blast, you can see how we've now got more sections. 
And it's important to break this up into smaller sections because each one of these separate pieces of geometry, uh, each cliff will be a separate work item when we run it through a TOPS network. And the more we break these down into separate work items, the more we kind of be able to run them in parallel to hopefully speed up the, the speed that it takes to process. And also, we don't want them to be kind of very large pieces because when we have to subdivide them to displace them, it's quite likely we'll run out of memory. And I can see we've got some floating points left behind after this blast. So let's add another clean. There we go, that's removed those floating points. And I'm also I'm going to add another delete small parts because we've ended up with some very small parts after we used, after we blasted out that flow attribute. So this one I'm going to set something very low say 100. There we go, that's now blasted out kind of any small kind of orphaned bits of geometry. So that's our first um, digital asset. So I'm going to select everything from below our load landscape. So I've selected all of that, including our attribute wrangle down here, and I'm going to convert that to a subnet. And we're going to call this my field extract cliffs. That's the end of this video. In the next video, I will take a single cliff section and subdivide it and use height maps to add the cliff detail.